Hi guys, I'm Darren, and in this video, how we can take back control from a learner with just moving our sticks. This video was a user request from a few people on the YouTube channel, so I thought I'd make a quick video showing how to do this. What we're gonna do is, we'll, we've got our trainer function set up as normal, and what this will actually allow us to do is activate the trainer with a momentary switch, and then we just need to move the control stick to take back control from the trainer. Now we could use some more logic to use a regular switch rather than a momentary switch, so I'll show how to do that towards the end of the video too. But let's head over to the desktop and get started. So this is just a trainer model from the last video, and I won't go over how to set up a trainer from scratch again, but just to show you the current settings on this, let's pop into trainer, and you can see I've got it on master. It's not set to wireless because the last thing I showed was using a cable and the trainer switch is set to SH. So when you hold that up, you're in or varying control when you let go, they're not. And that's indicated by that little icon at the top there. But what if we don't want it to work like this? What if we just want to hit a switch to give them control and then let go until we need to take control back? That's what we're going to look at right now. So let's back out of this and we're going to go into logical switches. Now the first thing that we need to do is create a latch so that we actually have a state that the trainer can, can use to decide whether it's on or off. So let's call this trainer latch. And what we're gonna do is set this up to a sticky. Now for the time being, we're not gonna set up the off condition because we haven't written that yet, but we're gonna choose an on position. So this will be a momentary switch. So we have one to choose from here or we have two on the back of the radio. So just hold the one that you wanna use down, click return and then let go. So you can see when I push the switch in, this lights up like a, a bolder blue color. So that's our on condition. So we're gonna come out of this and now what we need to do is set the off conditions because we just want it to be when we move our sticks. So we're gonna add another logical switch here. And what we're gonna do is call this detect and let's do aileron first. And what we're gonna use is what's called a delta switch. And this is when something changes by a certain amount. So what we wanna do is pop down to this little triangle inside the lines greater than X. So what this will measure is each direction. We're gonna set this up on the aileron so just move your aileron. And what we're gonna do is give it a value of say 10. So when it's moved by 10, it will activate. So if I move that, you can see it's blinking on and off, but that doesn't matter. All we need to do is detect that it's been moved. But what you need to decide is how you want it to detect. You can see if I move the stick quick, it's flashing up green. You don't need to worry about it staying solid green. We just need it to flash up. But if I move it slowly, it's not detecting. So you can adjust the check interval. So if we lengthen that to twice as much, when we move slower, it should still detect, which yeah, you can see I'm moving slower and it is still detecting. So let's try half a second because at the end of the day, we, we just want it to detect. So yeah, you can see that's moving it slower, it's detecting now. So that's probably good for us. And we need to move that minimum of 10%. So little tiny movements in the middle, no matter how quickly I do it, it's not affecting it. So it needs to go that sort of 10% either way. But once it does, it detects. So there's one more thing we need to do. We can see that our detection is working fine, but there will be a problem at the moment if we connect up to a slave radio because if we activate the trainer and the slave moves their stick, it will get detected. So what we need to do is pop up to our source for aileron and we're gonna hold down the enter button for a long press and then we're gonna make sure to check the box that says ignore trainer input. Once we do that, we can return out and we're ready to continue with the next step. So what we want to do is copy this logic switch for the other inputs. So what I'm gonna do is just click enter and go down to clone. And I'm gonna long press to edit the clone. We'll just rename it to detect elevator. And we're gonna go down 
click on the source, we're going to move the elevator. And again, we need to long press and hold and ignore trainer input. And last but not least, we're going to do exactly the same for the rudder. Now I've deliberately left the throttle because then you can maybe adjust the throttle while the learner is flying and you don't necessarily want to take back control. So they've decided to fly a bit quicker or a bit slower. You can sort of adjust your throttle to try and match. But if you move that rudder, it will work. So we, we have our three conditions now. So we need one final condition to tie them all together. So let's add a final logical switch. And we're going to call this detect gimbals. And we're going to use an or condition here. And we're going to set our first value to logical switch. And we're going to do detect aileron. The second value will be again a logical switch. And this time detect elevator. And I'm sure you can guess the third value. Now, if you don't know already, you can see this little plus here. If you click it, it will give you the option to add that third value. So now we're going to go into logical switch and we're going to choose detect rudder. Now that's it. So now if I move any of this elevator, aileron or rudder, you can see that this logical switch is activating. So now all we need to do is go back and edit our trainer latch. And we're going to set the off trigger to our logical switch detect gimbals. So now if I activate it, we can see it's activated. If I move the gimbal, it's deactivated. So that is our switch working. So now all we need to do is go back into the trainer and set the active condition. And we're going to be using a logical switch and we're going to use the trainer latch. So if I click the momentary switch, we can see the trainer latch is on. We have our little red light. And if, as soon as I move a control, the red light goes out and as does the trainer latch. So that is now working with a momentary switch to turn on the trainer. But what if you wanted to use a normal switch? We can do this in exactly the same way. So let's pop back into logical switch. And what we're going to do is create a new one and call it trainer on. And again, we're going to set up a delta. Next, let's choose the switch we want. So we'll go for SA for this example. And now we just need to set a value. Now the switch is zero to 100% and either way. So if we set this to 50, that should definitely capture the 100% movement. So now You can see it's just blinking up, but it is capturing it. So now all we need to do is go back into our trainer detect. And all we're going to do is change the on trigger to a logical switch. And set it to trainer on. So now if we move this switch, trainer's on, move the gimbal, it's off, move the switch again, it's on. You can see no matter which how I move this switch, it turns the trainer on. And then when I move a gimbal, it turns the trainer off. But there is one other thing we can do, because what if we also want to have the option of turning it off from the same switch? Again, this is really simple. All we're going to do is edit our detect gimbal. And I'm going to rename it to detect trainer off because now we're going to be doing more than just the gimbals. So we have our detect trainer off and all we're going to do is add another or value. Now, if you wanted it with the momentary switch, you'd obviously click in this, hold down the momentary switch and click return. If you wanted it with that switch, which we just set up with the logic conditions, you would, or logical switches, you would choose logical switches and you'd actually choose the trainer on switch that we made. 
So now, trainer latch is what we're after. So if I latch it, it's on. If I move this switch again, it goes off. So now we're going on and off with the trainer using the same switch. And of course, the, the, the gimbal detection still works too. So that's, that's how you can do it. So you can turn the trainer on and off with the same switch or turn it on with the switch and have it off with the uh, stick movements. And just for completeness, let me just show you that uh, with the uh, momentary switch. So all I'm gonna do is change trainer on to the momentary switch. And then we're gonna go back into trainer detect off and change this one to the momentary switch. So this top one here is what we wanna look for. So it's on, off, on, off. So just before I go, I thought I'd show this all working. So what we have on here is obviously our trainer setup. So if I click the momentary switch, we can see it latching. I'll click the momentary switch again, it turns off. Momentary switch to turn the trainer on and stick to turn the trainer off. Just to show why this uh, was important, I'm gonna take off this checkbox on the aileron. So if I turn the trainer on and then move the aileron, you can see it's not actually triggering it. The elevator will because that's still got the ignore trailer on. But if I put it back on and I move the stick on the trainer, you can see it turns the trainer off, <laughs> which is not what we want. So that is why it is important to make sure that on each input for the off detection, you turn on this ignore trainer input. So just to confirm, that needs to be on the aileron stick, the elevator stick and the rudder stick. So now if I turn the trainer on, whatever I do on here is not going to turn it off. But we can see as soon as I do that, it switches the trainer off. So just to show this all working properly, we're going to go into the outputs. So I've set the trainer up, I've got the Bluetooth connected, so it's all working there. And we're going to go into the outputs and here we can actually see what's being sent over to the receiver. So my ailerons, rudder and everything is sending data to the receiver. This is doing nothing. So if I turn the trainer on by clicking the momentary switch, we can see up here that the little trainer icon is up. And now the aileron, elevator, rudder and throttle are working on the slave. So I'm going to leave the throttle up so we can see the difference. And what I'm going to do is move the aileron stick on here and you can see instantly the throttles moved down and the trainer icon has disappeared. So now we're back in control, we're doing everything. So again, we'll click the button on the back to activate the trainer and I'm going to do the button on the back to turn it off. So you can see the trainer's on, trainer's off. So it's all working as it should. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. So there you go, guys. I hope you found this video useful and now you can use the trainer feature as you like. So if you did, please remember to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to help get this video out to more people so they can learn how to do this too. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Fly models like you stole them and have a great time. See you later.